Oops, this is unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> right, nothing like a fastball. First one of twenty twenty as well. Number number seventy four. Number seventy four. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. When uh, when we were cheers, mate. In Thank fact, you. you have your brew. I'm yeah, we'll happy. do. Let's start with that one. Yeah, yeah, go. Ahead. Cheers. Ben, when we were on, uh, when we met each other on juniors back in two thousand and five, mate, I decided yeah. to start cutting about in women's knickers and that. <laughs> Do you think, yeah, uh, hey, I did, I did, did you think we'd be doing a podcast, what, four, 15, mate, 15, 15 years later? Years, yeah, yeah, 15 years. Well, actually, you, you phoned me up when you came up with the idea, didn't you? You phoned did me I? up, and I got a series of uh, WhatsApp voice messages that were going like, right, I've got this fucking idea, bud, I've got this fucking idea, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, and then I'm, I'm obviously trying to go, well, what about when you come down to HR 4K, we're doing it, like, no, fuck that, bud, I'm doing this, and I was like, okay. So, um... After being one of the first people you spoke about, 74 of them later, you finally invited me down here. <laughs> Mega, mate, thanks. Mate, don't make it the last time. Mate. Don't make it the last time. Talk about HR4K. Mate, HR4K is, it is a good spot for podcast. Well, uh, Gaz does his, don't it? Gaz yeah, watches yeah, his, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he did it early. I mean, the, the, the acoustics in the place is mega. Um, it's not that busy, so it's quite good to get people in there and use that, those quiet times to, for people to come in and, well, utilise the space, really. I'll have to go down and test it. Yeah. I'll have to come down and test it. Because there's a, there's, a, there's a padre not far from there yeah, who, has, who has said about coming on the podcast. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's so... Mission Motorsport stuff. No. Oh. No, pa- no, the padre. Oh, from right, that neck okay. of the woods. Right, okay. I'm yeah, it right. surprised me as well. So he's not coming on the podcast. I know, yeah. oh, no, random. So I might end up using HR4K for that. Happy. Um, but I'll have to go down and do a tester first. And I've just finished fixing my bike. So I'll have to come back on the bike. Happy. You are you are you riding an Indian, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, so we teamed up with Indian um, about a year ago. Um, we had this concept, this idea of um, you know, you know, squaddies, ex-military, ex uh, merchant services, or even serving. There's moments in your careers where you get a big lump sum of cash, and what you're going to spend on. Most of us, well, about a lot of people spend it on bikes, don't we? Right. Um, so why don't we look at using a, a company like Indian to bring people together to like create communities, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So regardless of the bike, but use someone like Indian as a focus. So we said to Indian, listen, there's a lot of squaddies buy bikes. Uh, any chance you could offer them deals through your dealerships, and in turn we can then sort of bring communities together. Not necessarily official rideouts, but maybe a place that people can go and meet up and. Um, all walks of life and, and sort of create communities not institutions because as you know a lot of the problems are we, we're quite institutionalised well not all of us some people are um, so what we want to do is like unite people with communities give people a place a purpose give them something that they have in common they can get involved it's Indian said yep absolutely all over in fact it was actually one of the young lads uh, called Charlie who works Indian it was his idea and uh, and then we kind of brought it together and then they, they teamed us up with um Thunder Road, down at Bridgend. Near, near. Thunder Road. No, go on. Yeah, so Thunder Road's a bike shop down in uh, in Bridgend. They've got another one in um, Gloucester. And they're our closest dealer. And off the back of that, then we've tied in with um, Crazy Horse recently as well to support some of our other ventures that we're opening up as well. So the same sort of thing. Use bikes to bring people together. It's the whole kind of lifestyle we do. It's escapism, essentially. You get on a bike, you feel like you're a rock star. Uh, granted you're still drinking cider and taking the kids to play planet and all the other bits and pieces normal run of the day mill but you get on a bike it's escapism isn't it so what better way to get people out of whatever rut whatever problem they're having or whatever it is use bikes community right it. yeah community. yeah exactly that. you know um, what we don't want to do is these sort of webster's motorbike clubs that people get together and will think they're sons of fucking whatever you know they're not you, you live in England, you know, you, you eat pasties. Chapters of economy. Yeah, you want it. and it was just, we, we don't want that. We just want people to come together and everything. There's some great bike clubs. I mean, we know Invictus, you know, um, there's a good one up at the Copperheads, a load of policemen that run that one. There's some great bike clubs. I'm not taking that away. What I'm saying is, is getting these sort of lost souls and bring them together to these sort of meets. Yeah, mm. That's kind of the idea. 
Well, you're doing that with HR fork in a bunch of ways, though. It's really clever what you're doing. And you got the CrossFit there. Oh, you did have. It's changed now. You got the, well, at uh, Hereford, you got the CrossFit gym there. You got the, like, the bar. You got the brews. I mean, I've, I, <clears throat> it's an interesting vibe at that place um, because I, I went down there for your, the first veterans event. It was a, I think that was the first time I went, I went there, actually. Was it? Yeah, for the Veterans um, Networking Day, yeah. and then oh no, you popped down one day. You just had a ride out, didn't you? Came down on. I, I've done it twice, mate. I've got. I've, that's like an hour and a quarter. I've got up early. I've biked down there, and I work from there, mate. There's no one there, but it's it's take myself out different place to go and work from, and just I just find that I'm really productive like that. And, uh, and it's fucking a chill out, man. Well, I'm, it doesn't look like your living room. It doesn't look like your place of work. That's the idea. Of, I mean, look, everything that we want to do. Um, outside of work is about escapism, isn't it? It's getting away from whether the, um, your other half's breaking your balls or getting on your tits, whatever, however, wherever your other half is, um, whether it's uh, having a bit of a shit day at work, whether it's missing that community <coughs> vibe. The whole point of what we wanted to create is pure escapism. Um, as I said, the decor in there is probably quite a familiar decor, certainly for ages between sort of 30 and 60 plus. Um, you know, it's got that sort of rock vibe. It's got that sort of alternative industrial feel about it. That doesn't look like your place of work. That doesn't look like your home. So the point is you can get in there, decompress, do whatever you want to do. And very much, you know, we wanted substance behind what our brand was about. And that's what we wanted to create. We wanted to create a place where a destination where people can go and just get away. And it's worked out as I quite well so far. So so let me ask you this, Ben. Um so we, uh, yeah, we did meet in ju- on juniors. Is when we, I think we probably, probably, we probably we passed each other on the piss. With Joe. Maybe, but... No, we knew each other before. Oh, with Joe. From Joe, right? Okay, and then and then we became like proper mates and on juniors in an old fight. And uh, but what, over the years, so obviously you are not long out. Over the year, over the years, um, one of the things has become really apparent about you is you're a t- you're not typical. You are an entrepreneur at heart. You know, you you, you come up with ideas, you go for it, and you've managed to. You've managed to, over your time, whilst you were still serving, um, foster a bunch of these ideas, successful ideas, and bring them through to fruition. And uh, ultimately now, HR4K being uh, arguably your, your most successful venture and, and the product of all those other things anyway. And that that is something that is something I, I really wish I could encourage or people could encourage more with people who are serving. Mm. Who are, it's like that long-term plan and not everyone's an entrepreneur as as i as ideas but those who are, those who do have ideas like that and are entrepreneur entrepreneurial sometimes you can see being ser- serving as a barrier to it they can't do it until they get out when in actual fact you can't so my question to you is if you're happy to talk about it tell me about that when it first started off you know when you first set up your, your first business how did it come about yeah. and you know what was it like what were the barriers what were the blockers what 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 made it a bit easier if if it was easy at all so i think it comes back to um let me sort of start where i've sort of discussed something similar to this with a lot of people i work with in the past and people now and and, and as you know when we do the veteran business days it's all about promoting people and, and you know seeing that exactly what you just said seeing the fact that you're not restricted because you're out or because you're in or whatever so i sort of define people in the military and certainly the units that i've been involved in um, as two types as tradesmen and craftsmen a tradesman is someone who needs institution needs structure needs direction they're very good at courses generally they're also very good at following the line they do as exactly as they're told and they crave that and that's what they need and they're very good and they're very regimental in, in that there's nothing wrong with them we need those you know they're they're they're, they're the backbone they're diligent they're going to get on with things etc and then there's craftsmen and craftsmen are the people who think outside the box, they're lateral thinkers, they're the people who need to create, they need to peacock, up, they need to own something. Um, and I think certainly the units that you and I have been involved in, um, we need craftsmen. We need people, you know, here's a load of cash, go to another country, I need to go and get on with some shit. You're not going to get a tradesman doing that because he's going to be constantly going, uh, what do you need me to do? Sorry, where, where do you want me? You know, so you need you need people who think outside the box, you need lateral thinkers. So I think there's two types of people there that I see in certainly in the military. And that has other side effects on the back of that. You know, certainly for some of them who are tradesmen, when they leave, they feel very lost because they don't have that structure around them and that safeguard. And then they need their next drop. You know, listening to um, Jay Tyler's brief, you know, potentially I sort of see him in that sort of tradesman bracket 
where he missed something and there was something that was sort of missing listen onto the back of the podcast and then there's the uh, uh, craftsman guys where they've got these great ideas but they don't necessarily have the tradesmen to back the ideas the enablers so for a lot of us in the units we've we've come from we've been very good at great having great ideas and then we delegate to all these enablers and get that shit done um that's where for me i had these great ideas of what i wanted what i thought was great ideas but i didn't want to really do the 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 intricate work so that i i teamed up with uh, a civilian a complete civilian has no history whatsoever with the military uh he's become a very good friend of mine a lad called david richardson he's a chartered accountant there's nothing this guy doesn't know when it comes to finances and doing all the other bits and pieces. He's, he, he's a nice guy. Just shout to David. No, you're a nice guy. You're like, yeah, he's yeah. a good geezer. Um, and um, he's really helped this kind of uh, go along. So every idea I've had, um, he's kind of belted it back. So go back to the original question. When did it start? I suppose for me in my career, I was never necessarily someone who was ever going to be missed by that unit. You know, I didn't really toe the line. I kind of did exactly. My, my whole career for, you know, 23 years has been about me. I've done exactly what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it. And I've done everything I've ever wanted to do. Um, and the frustration thing is that is that I got bored very quickly. So that's why I probably transferred from one unit to another unit. I got uh, frustrated because I didn't get to fulfill the needs that I had, which was to create or to own something or to be involved in sort of the J5, the J3, you know, into into the either operational or, or etc. Um, so... I've always had, I suppose, a flair for it. Probably the wrong word, but that's that's been my sort of mentality. Um, so, you know, ex-paratrooper, ex-pathfinder, I'm a kit pest. And um, I was asked by um, a training team that was going back into the jungle, and they said, listen, um, you're a pervert, kit pest, <laughs> can you design some kit? So I came up with this idea for some kit. It was called FCSR. Fighting, clearing, standing, and patrolling um, reconnaissance, and it was essentially a belt kit that you could do everything with. Everything from going into do all your reckies, and then you can actually go and do an, an offensive action just by putting some plates in. Um, and we did that, and we we got a lot of success. Um, but what we lacked was having the right type of team behind me when we came up with this. Um, with the first business venture to really secure that and make sure we drove it you know we had interest from seesaw uh, jtf to all kinds of different organizations that were saying listen we want your bell kit mega um but we didn't have the right team behind us to kind of carry on and really at the time i probably wasn't really thinking business i was thinking being a kit pest and i was thinking about getting stuff out there um off the back of that that's where i met david david richardson who was the accountant at the time for one of the companies we were involved with and um we said listen i've always wanted to run a business i always want to do something he was like yeah me too i said what do you want to do i said well let's come up with a name and then work it out <laughs> so we went right uh <laughs> hr 4k hr 4k you know uh, it was an anagram of 4k an hour we were like okay well that's something about you know our background or certainly mine we can drive this and i'll tell you what we're going to do we're going to do a business about the shit that i love and what do i love i love alley t-shirts i like coffee i like caps i like apparel i like just doing those bits and pieces and it's everything that's behind me and the organizations i've been involved in, including uh, my friends and the cousins um on the other side of the pond um so we thought right okay Let's import some of these goods, and we brought them over, and then we started pushing these brands. And actually, one of the first brands we got was Rogue American Apparel, and then straight after that, we got Black Rifle Coffee. In fact, I think, I think we were the first ever dealer for Black Rifle Coffee, even in their own country. I think we were the really? first ever. Yeah, so they're like, fucking huge massive, now. Massive, Jesus, uh, uh, amazing. They're videos, mate. They, they're the ones that are funny videos, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, yeah they're they're good, yeah. a good bunch of guys, actually. Um, yeah. you know, I, Matt McCall Times. I, I did one podcast with them uh, at the Shot Show a few years ago. Um, yeah, what you see is what you get. They're, they're, they're mega, absolutely mega. I mean, you know, they're, they're absolutely focused on, on what they're doing. And, and I think I probably, I'd say I probably use them as um, my inspiration as a business of where I want to go, what I want to do and how to <clears> adapt. Um, so, yeah, so we bought these T-shirts. We're in my garage. So two years ago, we're in my garage, you know, flipping T-shirts, getting T-shirts were coming in, coffee was coming in and we were just... But the problem I was having was... I was competing online 
with everyone who's suddenly a steely-eyed dealer of death, and because you, you can be whoever you want online. And we were like, you know, obviously we can't say what we do for a living and all the other bits and pieces, so how do we compete against these these people? And I think thinking about competing against these people is quite narrow-minded, really, because it's a massive market and there's a lot of space for everyone. And and actually, at the end of the day, it's down to the consumer and the cl- and the, the customer to make up their own decision about what they want to buy. No one's stealing your market. They're only stealing your market, they're stealing your ideas. But if they're actually in the same market, that just means you've got to up your game, or you've got to be better, you've got to, you know, do something that's different. Um, so they kind of drove it on. So that was, so we started this four years ago, two years ago, uh, you know, we sort of finishing up in my garage and we were dealing with this sort of narrow mindedness of thinking that you know um all these people putting these pictures up that has nothing to do with the history of where they served it was they just knew that these were images or or sayings and things that that they knew would you know strike to spike you know they were the stuff that they knew they'd get a reaction off online but we had legitimacy you know we'd, we'd done this that's probably why we were so under the radar um so what happened then so um, essentially we said, right, let's create something. Let's create, um, let's get some more substance behind what we're, what we're about. And that's where we found the building. This old Second World War uh, torpedo factory in Hereford that, um, you know, it's where the munitions used to come from, as in Wolverhampton or somewhere, and go from there and it'd go down Hereford. And then from there it would go south of the river to get stored. Um, there's real history in the building. It's got that, those aesthetics that you like, you know, red brick, old beams, etc. Uh, friends of ours were the owners of those buildings, so they kind of squared us away. And we got in there, and, and then we just went, right, let's, let's go to town. And we, we just created, um, over one Christmas leave, the ideal man pad. You know, like um, bikes, you know, bikes and Chesterfields and, you know, fucking AKs on the wall and all kinds of shit you know it was just we just wanted the ultimate but it had to have the right look because some people do that and it just looks Webster's it looks like I don't know I can't even go it's just cheap and tacky when some people do it because they try too hard but a lot of this is something about us and the places we've been to and the bars we've built in like shit old deserts and you know all kinds of places and then people just started giving us stuff. There was like, um, you know, we were gotten, we were given, as I said, um, like decommissioned AKs, um, decommissioned 30 mil barrels for lamps and all kinds of stuff. People just coming out of the woodworks and just kind of giving us bits and pieces. And because of that, it created a community. People coming in because they felt like they were part of it. They were bringing stuff in, they were getting involved with it, putting the patches on the wall and, and stuff like that. Um, so we, we, kind of permanent send here but so um i still had to be under the radar because i'm still serving so i couldn't be me i couldn't sell me as a person i had to sell the brand which actually has probably done me a favor because now it's about the brand rather than about trying to be about the individual um and through that we made some great connections we met up with you know the contact coffee guys um gaz Cineas guild um sam stoic um and we sort of built this sort of group of like-minded people all from the group or whatever you want to call this thing that we sort of formed and it was a great way to vent it was a great way to carry on doing business within the military um and kind of um unload and we unloaded through with each other rather than sort of customers or clients or your competitors and etc because we all have the same issues we're all in the same market together so it was massive strength by working together with other companies, seeing what their failures, what their successes, how do they work, where do they get this from, where do they get that from, um, who's pissing them off, who's jumping on the bandwagon, you know. And it, we just formed these like shit rep naps. You know? <coughs> sorry, just, sorry to interrupt because uh, I forget about it. Otherwise, you, 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 and it comes into what you're saying now. Earlier on, you, you, you were mentioned about. Um, you were looking at other companies as competitors, and it was the wrong way to look at it. Do you know the first time I came across that? Because that that sounds like a, a kick, it sounds completely counterproductive, counterintuitive to people who, are, who don't understand what it's about. And do you know the first person I heard that from? I learned that from Nick McCarthy. Oh yeah. So yeah, Nick, yeah. you know, Argus, yeah, yeah. Nick came oh, on the podcast mega. as well. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. mega. Yeah, he's mega. Mega bloke. And uh, it, it wasn't a podcast. I think we might have spoken at the podcast. But it was when he's not long after I trained with him, and uh, and. 
he was he was saying uh, it's, and he works in there so people who don't know Nick and Argus here they are they, they, uh, operational and they do training in private security uh, private uh, investigation surveillance close protection security basically what they do and th- those industries are fucking cutthroat they are cutthroat especially security industries hideous hideous um, real cutthroat and, and but Nick and Argus here and, and Bright Tough those guys who run it they they treat the other companies, private investigators, surveillance companies, all they're they in inverted commas competitors. They treat them positively, so they see them as a. So if someone, if Nick can't fulfil a task, maybe maybe he hasn't got the manpower, maybe uh, it's something that he hasn't got the expertise on, which is unlikely. But instead of going, sorry mate, or sorry company, I can't do that service for you. He will pa- he will do that, but he will pa- then he will recommend mm-hmm. another company, one of his competitors, to them. I can't do it, but goes to the go to these guys, and there's no formal like agreement between any other company. It's just it's just who he knows can work it out. And the same if what 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 that uh, attitude does is he gets people coming to him and coming to Argus through other companies, competitors again inverted commas, and they'll ask him for advice because they know they can trust him and they know he's going to give good advice back. And the way he sees it is he sees it as a it's a karma thing. It, it, it comes back around. Now, I, I, and you always see the positive light, right? And there's another angle to to looking at that. When I, there's, I heard a similar thing from a civvy company, a jewellers, right? Listen to this. So this is not. This is in the last couple of years in Stratford upon Avon, okay? And uh, I was in the jewellers, and we were chatting away, and um, and on the on the street there was two jewellers already on there, right? There was three jewellers altogether, I think. And there was another big one opening up, okay, just at the road. And this street is not big. And I said, guy said, that's a bit of a nightmare. Another, another jeweler's opening up. And he said, no, why? I said, well, competition. He said, no. He said, the more jewellers we have in the street, the more the street becomes the place where people come for jewellery. <laughs> so what you do is, the street has a higher footfall of people looking for jewellery. So, yeah, there's someone else they can go and buy from, but... the but on average across, we're all getting more footfall, so we're getting more sales. I thought, ah, fucking hell. And it's the same thing. It's really interesting with the veteran community. You said the community a few times, and you mentioned veterans and the biking and all that, okay? What's really interesting, I see, with the veteran community and veteran businesses, for the most part, not not across the board, for the most part, we seem to naturally operate in that way. We treat people, in inverted commas, competitors, as friends because they are friends and we see the value in it's mutual support we see it as we see the first thing is mutual support i because there's like seven or eight like uk podcasts now military podcasts out there man we all talk to each other most of us talk to each other you know we all connect with each other in some way shape or form you know and in a, in a positive way even though you know i'd love to have all declassified listeners and, and you have none i would love that but you know it's, it's the wrong way to look at it we, we're all there to help each other it's the same with the t-shirts the, t- the coffee companies if someone likes Ali T-shirts, right, it's very unlikely they're only going to like Ali T-shirts that HR4K sells. They're also going to like Ali T-shirts that Sydney's Guild sells, that other companies sell. So they're just attracting the right people, work together, and 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 it's sort of it's like force multiplying. It's yeah. force multiplying on the market on the market side of things. I think. Well, well that's how the that's how the veteran business day came about. Is but the idea was if. If everyone shared on their social media, they're going to turn up and they get everyone's numbers, then everyone's going to share those numbers. So, of course, there's going to be an overlap from some people who like the same pages. But if everyone's coming up to that event, then you're now multiplying your own page and your own bits and pieces and people are seeing what else is around. And as I said, it's down to you to kind of kind of do that better. Um, I'll just go back to I'll go back to where we were with. Um, once we create that place and it's kind of brings it up to where you first came into HL4K um, what we found uh, once we, we sort of <clears throat> set up uh, HL4K before we sort of moved on to these other options that have come up to us uh, recently and really again my, my, my view was quite narrowed and, and that was because I wasn't necessarily a businessman I was just someone who wanted to create you know going back to that sort of tradesman craftsman analogy um entrepreneurial but more in a case that I just wanted to create not necessarily entrepreneurial in business um when we created this place hr4k we, we found that it people were coming in there as i said before they were using it as escapers and they were coming in and getting away they bring their kids in and bring their dogs in you know like now we've got reg here um you know people coming in just using in using that space and we found people were hooking each other up with jobs and like just 
patting each other on the back and making sure people are right. And, and it just turned into this great place. And we didn't get any Walter Mitties in there. Because we're not in the, the high street, you don't get people just waves and strays coming in. You get people who want to be there. They're actively going in there because they want to be there. So there's no space for Walters and everyone else. And it's one of those places that was quiet enough that you can still go and have a chat with your mates, but it's social enough that you can still. And then we started doing uh, some events there, um, which brought in you know, about 800 people some nights and you know 300 people another, et cetera, et cetera. All different people across the communities. And it wasn't just military, it was the civilian population and all kinds of stuff. And, um, excuse me, people come from all over. And what we were doing, we were making these, uh, creating these communities, not these institutions. Now we're mixing people who spent the whole life, you know, 22 years in some form of institution and now mixing with people who share the same ethos. And they share, share the same ethos because they come to the same place. They like bikes, they like rock music, they like interacting, like socialising, they like... They, they put, want to put food on the table for their kids. They want to pay taxes. They want to contribute to society. They weren't shits. They weren't scrotes. We weren't getting <clears throat> waves and strays and problem children through the door. Um, never had a single drama whatsoever when, when we did it. So that kind of brought us on to this idea of, of like, okay, well, next phase, let's look at how we can kind of make this work. Um, so we thought of doing this thing called a Veteran Rehabilitation Centre. Um, which was essentially, we went to 40 charities, 40 charities and associations, got them all in, came into HR 4K, sat them down, and I said, listen, <clears throat> I understand 70% of the people who come through your door are full of shit, right? They're all bluffers, PTSD being the new back for some people, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I said, there's a lot of people that don't get the care they need because the, the old saying, the squeaky gate is the gate that gets fixed first. Well, the good people don't make a lot of noise because we're too proud. You know, who's looking after the person who wants to put food on the table? Who's looking after the person who wants to get back on uh, track and, and, and into this? No one, because they're often too proud and they don't make a lot of noise about it. So we need to look after them. So the charities, the charities know who they are, but they can't discriminate who they are. So I said, I can discriminate. I Give me those good people. Give me those good people and I'll find boxing gyms, clubs, associations, CrossFit gyms, whatever... And then you can pay their memberships. You know, the, the top charities, I think they spent something like three million quid last year on 125,000 cases. I think that's 26 and a half thousand. Don't quote my maths because I'm my next reg bloke. But you tell me 125,000 people need 26 and a half grand each. You know, I'd say, why don't we put that money to get some really good use? And what are we doing by paying those memberships? We're supporting small businesses. So by getting these individuals out of the house during the quiet hours of these clubs and associations, which is during the day, because most of their members are working, so they're not there during the day. So how do these small businesses survive during the day? Well, let's get the people who can't work or are unable to work. Let's get the charity to pay their memberships to these clubs and gyms and et cetera, et cetera. You're now keeping the lights on and putting the heating on in these small businesses. You're now getting someone who's now interested in a new sport, a new club, a new activity, in, inter, interacting. Uh, um, they're interacting, they're socialising, they're doing everything they need. And then we then actively try and find them work through all our networks. What do we do by getting them work? We now have a paying person back into society, contributing back into society. And now they might have got a hook for CrossFit or Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or whatever. So instead of just throwing money at the problem... Look at the solution and the long term thing. So that's what we wanted to achieve. And, and at the moment, it's, we've had a bit of success with it. Um, explain the model again. So just because just explain it again. OK, so essentially we go to charities yeah. and say. We can get your beneficiaries into clubs and associations and CrossFit gyms and Let whatever. You pay their memberships for that period of time. So say, actually, I've got Joe Bloggs here. And I'm going to pay his membership. So British Legion, for example, are doing this now, um, which we've just started getting going, hopefully with uh, Elite Performance in Hereford, which is what we want to start rolling out with. You pay their membership for, say, six months or three months or whatever it's going to be. That is now guaranteed income to a small business for three to six months. You're now looking after that individual and getting that person out the house. Yeah, and obviously I, the time they're in those locations are during the quiet hours of those businesses where most of their members you would normally be at work. 
So we're now supporting small businesses. We're ticking boxes for local council initiatives, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, yeah, I understand that, but it's, it's fucking cool. I'm, I'm just I'm trying to work out how the charities sort of t- how do they how do they justify that as in pe- I don't know. Yeah, that's down to them. It was good. I was good. I'm just trying to work out. No, it's good, mate. It's good. But you know, uh, for me, when did that start? um, Well, we we sort of kicked it off at the end of last, no, the start of last year is when we sort of kicked it off. Um, We've had a few teething problems. Um, Some of the people that we wanted to get in, often we're trying to target the the ones who are unlikely to come forward. The, the the more proud types. How do you cetera. identify them then? This is this is the other thing I think. How do you if 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 they and I agree they are very difficult to identify because they don't flag themselves up right until it's a fucking hideous yeah. drama, hideous drama. So they may not be in front of the charities. They no, may okay. Not. So a, a couple of ways. Again, I, I'm no expert in this. No, 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 no. We're doing so. So um, when we started up HR 4K, I I threw a lad called uh, Vic Vickery. We trained up all my staff as mental health first aiders. <clears throat> so all my staff that work behind the coffee shops, et cetera, et cetera, are all mental health first aiders. Awesome. And their job was to be able to signpost. When people come in, they can just shoot the shit with the girls behind the bar, um, you know, and just crack on. And then obviously a few of their, fr- uh, few of the guys who've got friends, they can bring their friends in and then they can kind of, you know, um, bring these individuals in. The girls are then armed with a number of associations and charities that they can then signpost them to. So the girl's job is not to solve their problems. The girl's job is just to listen, understand, and be able to signpost to associations and charities. Again, I, I'm only working within my wheelhouse. I'm not going It's to clever, that. mate. It's clever what you do. Um, yeah, it's clever what you and do. then the the charities as well. And as I said, the charities know who these people are. They've been, um, they've dealt with some of these individuals. But what do they do with them? A lot of the time, their time is being taken up by the people who are making a lot of noise, but they don't really get a chance to look after these individuals. Much of what they could do <clears throat> is give them to clubs, um, etc., and associations who are trained and do understand how to deal with these people and bring them in. And, and as I said, if we can small, support small businesses, then isn't that great? You know, if we can start uh, support small businesses and keep the lights on for those guys and girls, and a lot of them are veteran owned as well, which is fantastic because obviously they're starting off and they're probably running out of cash from whatever they had from their pensions, etc. So, um, sometimes I think, sometimes I think there's nothing wrong with the systems. I, I think all they do is they throw cash at the problem. You know, but actually, maybe there's a way we can be more constructive with supporting these individuals. Um, and, I, and I said, it's not just people with mental health issues. Far from it's also people, you know, some of the old and bold who are a little bit injured or picking up injuries or post post uh, operations that they've had. Um, you know, so they've had their hip fixed or whatever they've had. Then we can use all our friends who are physios, etc., to get them looked at and then get them into these these places. So that's kind of where we, we got to. And I think... As a positive, um, because we were positive, that's opened a lot of doors for us, um, like lots of doors. As a business, it's opened lots of doors. Um, in, um, originally, you know, it was set up uh, to look after my association that I, I was part of, or am still part of. And I want to do, because that association looked after my kid when my kid needed help, and the next day there was money put into my bank to go and sort my kid out, you know, help my kid. It was amazing. And I've been, you know, it's an absolute privilege um you know uh, and i'm massively grateful for the help they did so i wanted to give back as well and it was a way i could give back with not really having to do anything outside of my wheelhouse you know i'm not a you know psychiatric nurse i'm not a uh, an expert in anything but what i do know is right i know him i know them and i'm a good networker i know who that these people are and i just join the dots you know and, and i kind of just sit sit in that space um yeah and on the back of that you know when we've had all these events things have started opening up. And then we, we've seen, actually, do you know what? <clears throat> We're not just a business that sells T-shirts and coffee. We've got lots of other strings. And then people come to us, like uh, Owen Toms, uh, ex-Power Edge guy, said, look, Ben, I want to open up a CrossFit gym. Okay. He says, can you bring your brand? Let's do a CrossFit gym. All right. So now we're opening a CrossFit gym in Amesbury, 10,000 square foot CrossFit gym in a garrison of 22,000 troops. Amazing. You know, that's where that's coming. Now we're opening another one in London. Well, it's open, isn't it? Um, yeah, foot in the door. Yeah, I did. I th- I knew about the Amesbury one. I didn't know about the London one. The London one's open before Amesbury. 
yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the problem is, I've got... So the one in Amesbury is a purpose-built. It's going to be one of three in the world ever built, a purpose-built, uh, carbon-neutral, putting energy back into the grid. It's We're using this new thing called graphene that goes into cement, so make sure it lasts for, like, forever. Um, you know, 10,000 square foot unit, fully um, rogue have got on the back of us, you know, are going to support this as well. So it's amazing. Who? Rogue, um, as in fitness. Oh, Rogue right, fitness. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then also we've got Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, who also got involved. So going back to the VRC model, um, one of the guys that we've been looking after, and I call Paul, who um, was um, blinded in Afghanistan uh, 10 years ago. Again, the system was great, looked after him and everything else, but they didn't really give him everything he needed. We introduced him to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Now he's healthy, he's active, he's now in a sport that he can feel he can compete equally with mm. able-bodied people. So that gave us the idea, why don't we bring Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in with CrossFit so we can then support getting people stronger, fitter, and we can then brought, bring in the VRC beneficiaries in through our networks. Again, I suppose we are looking for memberships from the charities to come in and support the business, but also we're giving these charities in other places, places where they can send their beneficiaries you know, within a, a familiar uh, uh, environment, etc. You've um, you've touched, a, you've mentioned a couple of times there. Um, uh, charities uh, not giving the right support, or giving um, or giving less than adequate support, or not giving support where it's needed, or the right, yeah, the right support. Which is an interesting conversation if you fancy venturing down the road. Um, um, I'll, I'll only probably go as far as what I know because, to be to be honest, well, what yeah. I have seen from charities, there are some people who, as I think you know Jay touched on before, there are some charities who rip the arse out of. They almost tell everyone they got PTSD. So they, there's more people on the books, um, but actually, there are a lot of charities doing the best that they think they are doing. I'm not trying to do anything. I'm not trying to uh, knock anything they've done. That's not what I'm, what I'm about. What I'm about is giving them an option. That's it. Oh no, That's I was. It. I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't suggesting that, mate. I. I. Uh, I um, it, it's just a. There seems to be like a growing number of a growing uh, percentage of percentage, just a growing amount of people who. Uh, I've been happening for years now. Who sit there and and just are quite content to, to to slate charities because they're not giving they're not giving X Y or Z when and and they're sitting on all this cash, and one of the things one of the things that uh, which I don't I I my opinion is I think all the honest charities because they're a fucking bluffs out there and, and not just military they yeah, just you get chances they set this thing up oh I can I can make a bit of money yeah, fucking, yeah you get it. Um, all of the honest, well-meaning charities, okay, they all have a purpose and they all do the best they can. Um, but in the same way, like, the NHS can only provide so much care. Any organisation provides any service can only go so much to, to, to a certain level, depending on what their resources are, from money to logistics to anything else to personnel, right? And expertise is a big one. So... Um, so where we're talking, uh, I mean, you, you, you're on about uh, community and being active and all the rest of it. And one of the problems with the military charities is at the moment is because of all this, because of other years, and Health for Heroes are the first one that suffered from it, for all of the, the media attention on the how this, look how much money they're sitting on now. They're under so much pressure, military charities in particular, they're under so much pressure to spend, 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 spend. That unfortunately, I think over the last three, four, five, six years, their their focus on providing the, co- the correct quality um, assistance needed as soon as possible to a veteran has become um, has become uh, what's the word uh, compromised by also the need to show mm-hmm. that they're spending because when because when dickheads uh, uh, when dickheads um, do their fucking their fucking sc- living room analysis of how charities are spending their money or the media are out to just get a news story all they look at is the accounts yeah. oh how much is in the bank how much they spent well you you took more in last year than you spent it doesn't fucking work like that what has resulted is and i know examples of this and what has resulted is veterans rocking up to a, an organization to a charity putting their hand up and and before they know it within within a matter of days or weeks i use a laptop 
use a bike. Use a new set. You like golf? Use a set of golf clubs. Spend, spend, spend because they have to be. Sh- you have to be seen to be spending as fast as it. Fucking madness, mate. Madness is really compromised the quality of care. The other thing is, as you were saying there, the amount of resources it takes. For, so you can uh, you can get a veteran who maybe he's he's on the verge of fucking killing himself. Maybe he's just he's he's got PTSD at some stage. He's got a mental illness. He ain't happy. He is recognised he needs help or she needs help. Okay, they ain't happy, and they go. Charity, whatever, let's say it's combat stress, help the heroes. It's a small one, 353 three trust, okay? And they go and they provide their assistance. Well, they're not small, small ones are different. The big ones, they provide their assistance. To provide, um, to, 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 for a veteran to fully, for anyone to come fully out of an illness, whether that's physical or mental, they need, a lot of the time, for serious illnesses, they need almost day-to-day care. And I'm going to say care in inverted commas, right? Because care can be being active care can be being with your muckers care can be daily physio okay charities don't have that re- the big charities don't have that resource it, it they'd have to be the size of a fucking army to do that because of how many people come through the doors and need care it's just not possible they can't do it which is where which is why i like the small charities and i like the foundations and I like things like what you are doing with the vrc 100 percent because the smaller organisations who give a fuck and are able to and do things like like I said to you, that awesome idea where you've got your your staff, their mental health trained. That is, I remember you telling me last year, mate. That was I thought I was a, like fucking awesome. It's really clever, really clever thing to do. You guys, because you're local and you're small, you're much more integrated into the community and society, and you're much more you can get much closer to the people who need the help. And you are where those veterans are. You you are around where they live because they come to you because they live in the area, right? Whereas Help the Heroes is fucking dotted, or charities are just dotted here, there, and everywhere. You can provide that aftercare, if you want to call it. You can provide the vital stuff that prevents the veteran from slipping back down into the pit, which is really easy to do because as soon as they come become disconnected from the big charity and and no one else takes them on no one else takes them under their wing they fucked it's happened to me mate it's happened to me it happened to me went from uh help the heroes to uh, did a great job i went help the heroes to nhs i went to an, into another organization another organization ended up getting treatment and then when that treatment finished phew, i was on no one's books nothing and it was a space of six seven months i went down the pan again like straight down and it was a, a nightmare. It was a nightmare. And then I nearly went Pete Tong, and then I ended up back in the chain. But partly, and this is during the fucking podcast, mate. Well, not long after I started the podcast, you know. But because of this, and because of speaking to people like you, and just getting more knowledge, and I'm like you, and a networker, and getting more knowledge, and being lucky enough to know people who know shit, <laughs> I was able to, when I came back out with this the second time, I was able to recognize, and people brought me under their wing. I was brought into local stuff and local smaller charities and people and that's re- well mate i've fucking sat here able to chat to you you know so i i see the importance of the big charities see the importance of the small charities but this stuff with the big charities spend the spending their money in the wrong fucking place is not or not spending enough is absolute madness it pisses me off and, it, and because of people doing that it 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 prevents those big charities doing quality work it needs a fucking laptop i don't want a laptop I'm going to sit with my cousin and talk shit. Well, as, as I said, I mean, what we want to do... As a rant, know, sorry. If, no, 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 exactly that. What we want to do is, you know, people are trying to give us money. We've had events where people are trying to, listen, I want to give the VRC money. I don't want your money. Because if I've got your money, I've got to justify what I'm going to spend with it. I don't want your money. Is the VRC a charity or foundation? No, so we're going to set it up as a, a charity. At the moment, it's just an initiative. That's all it is. It's just, uh, the idea is just to go, right, do you know what? Let's go and support a load of other small businesses. Let's try and help them out. And let's also, at the same time, spend some charity money looking after individuals who oh. actually directly need help. So all, all it is, 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 as I said, it's an idea to kind of spend some money in the right direction and get people into the community. It ticks all the boxes of all the local councils. It's now the councils can talk about it, that they're now directly helping people in their own community. They're also supporting small businesses. It's win, 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 uh, win all over the place. Um you know, I think it is Her- Hereford's probably a little bit of a strange place with regards that we there are, you know, there are issues in Hereford, which was a big massive farming community. You know, and there's probably more farmers that probably commit suicide than there are veterans. You know, certainly in these rural areas. So 
HR4K wasn't just about military, it's about the community. You know, we're bringing all these people in. Um, we want to help the Blue Light Services. We want to help. We want to help just Joe Blogs. I don't care what your job's ever been. Really don't care. Because at the end of the day, you're a geezer or you're a, you know, you're a good girl. All, all I want is to help good people put food on the table for their kids and get back on the horse. Um, we probably had to say we were supporting veterans to support... Uh, to tick the boxes for the local council because obviously uh, helping veterans was the emperor's new clothes which is what everyone's jumping on the back of but actually it wasn't about veterans it was about people and signposting people the right you know uh, good people and and helping those people um, where they needed it it wasn't about just veterans we said veterans originally as I said because um, we needed the tick in the box of the council but actually it was bigger than that yeah, you, you you're talking like you're doing yourself a disservice there. It is it is veteran. I mean, it, it it I sorry, ticking the box got through with like fucking ticking the box. No, percent Well, it, this is this is what's interesting as well about um about the veteran community is that I think we in a it's crap that um uh, it appears to be like you know there's a lot of issues going on and uh, with just people people you know fucking mentally. Um, it is crap. But one thing with it is because of the type of organisation we are. We were part of, um, and now part of the community we are part of. Rich, we're much more open with each other. We're now becoming over the last couple of years as a as a community, as a, I mean, a military community, much more aware of uh, the impacts of uh, the impacts of of, of um, not looking after yourself, well being, mindfulness. Or, or that. We're much more open to talking about it now, mm-hmm. and but I think because we're so close knit. We and because there's a lot of us, and we can, we, it's very easy for us to communicate with each other and see what's going on. And because there's been a lot of focus in the media, I think we are, we are, we have, we are learning at an accelerated rate about how to deal with this stuff as a community, and uh, compared to other communities and and and, organ, uh, and backgrounds. And one of the things that is beneficial with that is that, as you say in there, absolutely. What we are learning and what we're experiencing, good and bad, and what we're learning has such a benefit for the wider, uh, other, other, other industries, other organisations, other communities. You mentioned their farmers. There's all the other blue light, yeah, you know, well, the blue light services. You got all those people like uh, Nick, uh, Nick, um, oh shit, Nick Goldsmith on it, Hidden Valley Bushcraft. He started off his as veterans and then has realised he expanded it, blue light service and other people. And people go there with just get outdoors and just deal with their mental health, be it to improve their good mental health or to deal with the bad mental health, but attracting all walks of life. And the people who come into our community, much in the same way the Reg, right? And people fucking from the outside, they hate the Reg. They're like fucking Reg wankers. And that's absolutely <laughs> that's absolutely justified. <laughs> Ap- absolutely justified. Apart from the only people who don't think that is the people who came on whoever embedded with us, ever always, attached. Yeah, always is. They can't work. And they'll go away and they always, unless they're a wanker, unless they're a wanker and cheat like a wanker, they, they will go away and they'll be like, fucking hell. Because they say it, like, fuck me. That was, that's, I actually, actually I fucking enjoyed that. Because we bring him in. You come, you you come in, yeah, you may be a screamer, but you come in to Power Edge, you are a benefit to us and we're a benefit to you. Yeah. We need you. Yeah, we you are now that, part yeah. of the team. I absolutely appreciate it. And I think that's what, People outside of the military who are not who are not military veterans coming in and being brought into the community, they are seeing huge value in it because we're able to teach and we're able to learn off each other. You know, I mean, I had Helen Barnett on, who's ex SO19 and a you know PTSD mate. That she, oh, mate, you should listen to that podcast. She fucking had it hard, man. You know, uh, stabbed, mate, shot, blown up twice by the IRA on the same day, mate. And then uh, in the nineties and back then didn't have any any like. Awareness of very little awareness of PTSD, how to, how to deal with it. She ended up going to Hidden Valley Bushcraft and Nick just down there, and she's repeatedly going down there because she's part of the military community. You know, she just everyone's learning from everyone, benefits from each other. It's a, it's a, it's a, we're doing a really, I think it's a really valuable thing, a journey we're going down, veterans, mm. and and again with HR4K, the value vali- farmers, mate. Who would have thought? That you, you have any impact on farmers, but you probably are. Do you get them coming? Do you get? Yeah, any I get coming? a few. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because the suicide rate with farmers is fucking huge, isn't it? Yeah, it's massive. It's yeah. huge. Yeah, it's huge. What but do you know, know the percentage is? Uh, no, I don't know. Yeah. But I mean, you know, going back to those bits and pieces, um, you know, uh, you mentioned it before, it's we are a cross-section of society. Um, 
And actually, there's probably, if you look at the percentage of people who are having mental illness, you could probably equate the same percentage of plumbers to you could to, to military. You know, um, certainly some of those uh, tradesmen characters probably quite susceptible to it. You know, maybe they had a bit of a shit childhood and the military's masked that childhood for a period of time. And then when they leave, they're a little bit lost because they don't have that structure around them. That, and then obviously since 2009 it's quite easy for doctors just to go right yeah PTSD military Afghanistan yeah PTSD done when actually there's a lot more issues but the problem is then you have a guy or girl who's then got a label that says well well, I've got a tick in the box from a doctor and it says that I've got PTSD because I was in Afghanistan but actually difficult obviously there is obviously uh, varying degrees of where that's come from etc etc um, but if we can go back on to uh, go back on to so supporting uh, veteran businesses and, and small businesses and go back to the original question about um, uh, getting people geared up for that transition um, and getting people ready for when they leave my transition la uh, started five years ago really for when I was going to get out <clears throat> and um, my last unit has done a lot of work at looking at transition from a quite an early stage and identifying that many of those people have come to that unit later in life um, they are absolutely operationally focused more so than many other areas and then there's the opportunity to be operationally focused for a lot longer period of time um, and with that comes not necessarily looking outside of what you're involved in and then at the end of it like anyone else it's now ready time to leave um, I was fortunate that I looked at transition five years ago I had a five-year plan um, and I sort of came out of my five-year plan at the four-year point, which was lucky because I've got a great team that I've built up around me. Was that prompted? So that fight, look at it five years ago. Was that prompted from the unit? Uh, it was actually encouraged, yeah. So, um, Fucking hell. Yeah, so actually we're in a fantastic position that we are – it's a massive network. You know, People want to help. People want to support it. Um, there's <clears> not anyone we don't know or can't get hold of in, in some way. And we give back to them. You know, we make sure we, we look after those individuals as well. Um, you'd be an idiot not to use um, and make the most of that. And most of the time, these are our friends. You know, it's not like you're actually networking because you're trying to get something off them. You're networking because they're your mates and you're on the piss. You know, you're on the piss with all kinds of crazy, uh, interesting people um, who think you're crazy and in interesting as well for some random reason. Um, so f five years ago when, when I kind of started... Um, my thought process you know if you looked at that first company when i talked about with the belt kits and then i was thinking right this is what i want to do and then uh so uh sorry four years four years ago i started my transition for a five-year plan i apologize um so four years ago when we sort of started hr4k um uh my commanders were like listen i want to encourage this entrepreneurship because you're a network you know how to get shit done use those skills you naturally have to go and get shit done for this unit you know uh, go make friends influence people get shit done and that's what I did and I loved it I loved the fact that it was it, it felt like I was being an entrepreneur within inside that using your wits using your, your knowledge using that um, that entrepreneurialness to um, you know solve problems um, so it was promoted uh, by them and an encouraging that, you know, over the last sort of couple of years. More coffee. I'm all right. I've got this still. Over the last couple of years, see, uh, over the last couple of years, we've then uh, kind of supported the transition for other people. So um, looking at transition for a lot of people is getting people ready for when they leave, using those networks, making sure, because actually, you know, 10 years, uh, you know, I got a friend of mine 10 years ago was doing like a, a business masters or whatever it was he was doing, you know, when he was coming back off the ground and, and trying to do all these bits and pieces. But how do you know that's what you want to do in 10 years? How do you know that is even relevant in 10 years, etc, etc? Um, for me, I was just having a bit of fun for four years and then found out, do you know, actually I've got something. Here. Um, but and that came down to having and building a great team, you know, uh, David, uh, uh a chartered accountant uh, and all the other networks obviously I can't say all of those names and the other people are involved in this but what we have done is now offered that to other veteran companies we're saying listen you know we started off in my garage with five grand now running a multi obvious uh, uh, company you know uh, with 
various locations and that was within four years and it worked because we got a great team and we found all these faults and we we didn't have to live off the money etc so because i didn't have to live off it i could make as many mistakes as i wanted so now we've turned around to uh, other veterans who've got their own businesses so listen understand you as a veteran you've got some great ideas but you used to have an enablers doing all your shit jobs for you and actually if you do all your shit jobs you're not focusing and driving the front of your business going forward so why don't you let me do your shit jobs use my network use all the friends and people i've met in my career and then i can do your shit jobs and then i think he's just done one he was looking at me <laughs> and then we can do those we can do those shit jobs and do and be your enabler and now we can drive those other companies so i think we've got something around 14 other veteran companies on the books that we kind of work with oh cool um ranging from tattooist to coffee company to a shipping company to a an insurer um uh, a van conversion company loads of different companies uh, and then what we do is we use those networks that we've now supporting to then support the other networks so if you need someone who does shipping we'll go see our other guy who does shipping we get you a good rate go see the guy who does insurance we can get you a good insurance rate go see the guy who does and then when we when we did the veteran business day last year we took on two more companies not only did we start stocking their stuff we also then started doing the admin for these companies as well so now they're now running and they're literally running um, because they don't have to worry about doing the crap in the background. All they can worry about now is just focusing on what their build business looks like and then going for that medium, long-term goals, etc. So I suppose the transition piece for guys and girls who are looking at leaving, I'd say, you know, get in there, go for it. You know, at the end of the day, make the most of it while you don't have to rely on the cash. Go for your business ideas and don't be afraid to kind of step out, you know. And even if you do have to step out and get another job, still do it. But at least it's something you've created or something that you can be involved in, et cetera, et cetera. And then, you know, come and see us and we'll do your shit jobs. That, that is the biggie, mate. That is the biggie. Absolutely. You 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 don't have to rely on the money 100%. So if you think about um, – I, I, so if you think about – when I say you, I'm not knowing what you, I'm, I'm talking to the listener who's thinking, fucking hell, I could do that. Yeah, it's going to be someone listening. It's, you, you think about people, in, you know, when you get out, you think, well, I'll start a business. And absolutely, you're going to try and rely on it for money. You haven't, and that's pressure. You also don't know, you haven't learned the basic, the basic mistakes and lessons that you do. And like you're saying, Ben, when you're in is the best, even if you got some idea for... Maybe not T-shirt. Well, even these fucking T-shirts. I mean, that's a fucking market. But, even but when you're in, you've got you've got a cl- yeah. clerks who are mates of yours. You've got, do you know, in the the military, everyone in the military has a version of a job that you want to use. And so a clerk here is an accountant. There's a storeman who's who can tell you about doing shipping and moving stuff and other bits. There's a postie that works in the post office and tell you what the best rates are and other bits and pieces. But you don't even need all that when you're starting. So you start, I mean, just, you know, you're going to be learning, okay, what do you do to reg- register a company? Okay, cool. Do I need insurance? Okay, cool. What else do I need? To do? So, okay, social media. Okay, cool. Okay, I want to get. I've got this product. Maybe you make your. There was a guy, um, Fijian guy. Ah, oh, man, I can't remember his name. I can't remember his bloody name. Sorry, dude. He was making grog. No, <laughs> no. I've got a mate of mine who's making grog. Literally, he's making grog. It's fucking mental. <laughs> now this guy, mate, he's just mega, mega. Uh, uh, what you call it? Wood, 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 wood carpenter, oh, right. and um, making tables and shit with just. Cat badges and stuff. What are we making? What are we making there? <laughs> no, we're making them. No, I'm rolling. Um, <laughs> That's the next podcast. <laughs> That's the next podcast, mate. Uh, so just tables, and but he he was doing it as a as a part just pastime, and he was like flogging them for thirty or forty quid or whatever in, in a unit, and then he came to a, a networking event in it was a PRA event actually in uh, in Collie, and I sat there and he sh- I didn't even know he did this, and he showed us a photo. He's like, I'm thinking about getting out and. Blah blah blah. I'm like fuck, man. Just do right. Set up a so set up a Facebook page, set up a company, and start selling that. Don't worry about getting out yet. Do, but you get out if you want to get out. But right now, like when you go home, do a Facebook page, get a bank account, fucking PayPal, and start selling them online. Mm-hmm. People will buy those. And he started doing it, mate. Yep. And 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 uh, and he was successful. You know. And that's the thing. If it had gone pear shaped, as you're saying, what's he fucking lost? Exactly. Absolutely nothing. What's he gained? He's learned lessons. He's learned lessons. So the next time he gets another idea, because he'll have another, or she'll have another idea. Well, what am I saying she? Was it he? He'll have another idea. Well, he might, might be a she now. Anyway, he'll have another idea. Um, well, uh, so there's a mate of mine called Wayne Morris who I went to school with, and um, I met him. He w- works in the seas, works for a, like a, a web design or internet company. 
good guy and he said to me um, some really good advice about four years ago and he said don't worry about failing whatsoever because it's the people you're going to meet on that journey anyway so even if you just crack on with your journey and make all these networks and meet these people so even if your business option doesn't work as long as you're a good geezer then actually the people on that journey might offer you some work or give you a give you a lifeline etc etc so and, and with that really kind of gave a bit of confidence and and then i suppose looking outside of the military um we i met up with vicky and dutch who run the bike shed up in london and they gave me massive confidence to actually think outside the box so i sat with them at the end of one night and um asked them about investors and other bits and pieces and i never had the confidence to go for investor although david um it was like yeah let's look at investors other bits and pieces but i was like i'm too scared this is my baby i don't want to lose it i don't want to and then when chatting to the guys at the bike and they said no you know think about investors as long as you own the business and the model and you have full control over it these guys are bringing money and they're bringing networks that you can do so actually with that gave me the confidence to say right well, let's go find the right type of investor for this business model um and that's where when we started looking at uh, that's where I met with Owen and a lad called Rob Hibbard, um, who's a property developer uh, down in Wiltshire, and Owen being a CrossFit instructor. Um, meet up with these guys, it gave me the confidence then to say, Do you know what, actually, let's 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 start another business. Under HR4K as the brand, start another business where we're now doing something else, and now we're, we're reaching out. And then I met, um, well, I say I met, it's a, a mate of mine from work, a guy you and I know, um uh who's uh, still serving and he was like right you know what let's 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 open one up in london you know i'm up there i, I, I work up there all the time let's go and do one in london and i was like okay right so then he invested into the into the business so yes i've lost a small amount on that investment uh sort of my share but actually by losing something i've gained a hell of a lot more yeah diluting your share all in, but you but the the um but nothing, because I still control You're the brand. Expanding the, so I still expanding con- the business. So the brand I still control. Um, but what this has done is allow me to think outside the box. And now I'm bringing other people in. So I believe my shit doesn't stink. Um, it doesn't become the proverbial self-licking lollipop. Because to be honest, if I'd stuck at what I'd do in selling t-shirts, fuck, I'd probably be, I'd probably be under now. You know, when I was in my garage selling t-shirts and I was a limited company, mega. But then I had to go VAT quite quickly. Then I'm paying pensions and I'm paying wages etc etc so i had to think i can't just do that on t-shirts that i'm important from the states i'm not even making the 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 decent uh, uh uh profit that people do with small limited companies so i had to and actually that's been the best thing that we've done you know? how do you know dutch done it bike shed i don't know the owner i fucking love that place mate. Mayor, it? yeah, yeah cause I'm, um again uh you know uh is it ex- is any ex-military no 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 so uh uh I can't remember what Vicky's background is, but I know Dutch used to work for MTV and then uh, him and his mm. missus then uh, set up the bike shed. I met them through friends of ours, you know, people I work with in um, in my last unit and they're really well connected with those guys and they're just good people. So um, they introduced me and they're just really, really nice. But, and then also I've got to give a shout out to Edgar Brothers. Edgar Brothers also said to us, listen, um, love what you're doing. You're hitting a different market. You're hitting people within the market that we're trying to sell to um why don't we throw you a bone and they they allowed us to have a free pitch on their dci stand you know at, at the dci show a mega you know with these people and opening these these networks uh that was mike newman there that opened these networks again i'm now tapping into all these people in the um arms trade into the kit trade everything else and they're all people that are in my market you know black rifle coffee etc etc they're all stuff that i'm actually um, involved with in this cross pollination within the, within the industry. Um, looking at the CrossFit side, you know uh, people like your Dave Castro's, etc. They all have a similar background to me and my friends. So using these uh, networks uh, where we have a very similar background gives a bit of credibility to what we're doing. But it's a very neutral. Um, it's a, it's a very neutral ground because we all come from the same shit. We've all done the same things. We've all done the same, been in the same places. And all it is is just our networks. We're just bringing it together and then finding our own piece of our own market. Um, exciting, really. Um, I don't know, see how it goes. Get on with it. If not, it's good, mate. I love it. I love it. It's, it's really good. I'm looking forward to getting down to Wandsworth at the, at, uh, 
and the new HR four K place and I'll bring, I'll, I think the I'll one pack it, my gear. Yeah, I mean, there's there's even scope to to look at other options as well in around that area, which we're really excited about. Um, you know, teaming up with these um, Mauricio Gomez uh, backed people as well. I mean, these are big names within that industry. Um, I think Amesbury is is definitely going to be ones uh, to, to look out for as well. Um, you know, certainly with the the technologies we're using to build the box, as I said earlier, it's the one of three purpose built boxes in the world, ten thousand square feet, um, in a garrison of twenty two thousand troops plus families on the A three O three. It's it's epic. It's absolutely epic. Um, and in there, we've got Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. We'll have a, a physiotherapist in there as well. We'll have the big HR four K style coffee shop. Uh, crazy horse are talking about doing custom bikes so crazy horse a very similar sort of setup to your kind of your bike shed they've been going for about 25 years amazing people paul is the boss there they're looking at you know potentially talking about getting bikes into our places you know amazing you know and then we're bringing these people in so it's not just a crossfit gym it's not just a brazilian jiu-jitsu it's a place where people can go and meet and socialize and interact you know um it's cool as shit you you crossfit don't you do you do bjj I do. Uh, I, I get cross when I do fitness. No, I um, do. I do no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> My roll on the mat won't stop rolling. Um, no, so um, I mean, for me, CrossFit is. Um, I can go in a gym. I get a, a, an instructor who tells me exactly what I have to do for forty minutes or whatever the, the what is. Don't have to think about it. Do it three or four times a week and just do as I'm told. Um, BJJ. I play a lot of rugby back in the reg. Um, I might get back into that. Are you going to come in May? What's going on in May? Was it March? May? Fuck. What is it? May. May. It is, uh, we got, uh, what's going on? Forces Barbarians. Okay. The Fubars. <laughs> it's the Fubars. <laughs> the Fubars. Yeah, I caught that name. So we, so I was thinking earlier when you were talking about rolling, we should come up with a, uh, with a podcast instead of a podcast. A po- po- we can discuss that. <laughs> Uh, I've got yeah, I've got an amusing brand here that brings those brings those two in actually. Uh, anyway, separate conversation. Fucking hell. Uh, Mission work? Motorsports as well. Um, when I have a chat to you about that. Yeah, yeah, cool. So no, so the rugby rugby heroes. So one of the sponsors of the podcast, yep. and they're like they're a um, not for profit. They give yep. money to charities. Mike Valance. For, oh, of course you know. Fucking hell. Uh, so they we've started having veterans matches. So basically, a bunch of veterans. It's it's a uh, it's military veterans and in age. So you have to be thir- 35 or over. Bring your own proof in. Mate. Type thing, yeah. People just, we rock up, mate. And we rock up on the morning. Like, us, well, sometimes we rock up just before fucking kickoff. No one's played for ages, mate. A ga- I mean, Gaz, Gaz Walsh from Sunita's Guild played. And he, I think he hadn't played since he was like 16. Yeah. <laughs> rock up. Then we have a game against uh, against a local club. Again, veterans. But it's fucking brilliant. But there's another, it's next match. Oh, for God's sake. I, have to, I can't look at there. I think it's May. He's going to fuck, Mike's going to fucking kill me. I said at the start of the podcast, anyway. I think it's in May. So, but it's going to, it's going to be tied into the Beer Engine Festival, raising money for military charity. Okay. Um, you should bring your bring your cat, mate. Should we tell the story about the um, Wonder Woman outfit? You, you is it is, is it that good a story? I don't think it's, no, no. And, and to be honest, it was just me and you. And then when we actually, we're, so we've been wearing the uh, we've been wearing this Wonder Woman outfit. Uh, juniors, we thought you know let's spice things up a bit. So we wore Wonder Woman outfit for the whole of Fine Lakes, didn't we? Under our kit, mate. That's the most uncomfortable. I and yeah. these are ladies, so. Was it ten day exercise? Yeah, ten day yeah. exercise. Ladies, so we we had ladies Wonder Woman outfit. So a vest. Yeah. You, I had you. You had knickers. We had the knickers. I had hot pants. So these are ladies sizes. You got the biggest yeah. thing. Mate, fuck me, is uncomfortable. Yeah. More over the whole ten days. Yeah. And then no, but we were going out at night doing RVs because you're in a separate company or whatever it was. You know, I'm taking two, photos and then getting in. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's probably one of shit bits. It's only funny just to me. It was shit. It was shit. Anyway, yeah, it was shit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that's mega. Um, listen, my this is uh, cheers for getting us on this. This is this is wicked. Um, obviously, uh, when you mentioned about doing the podcast originally, it's mega touchy being involved in this, which is wicked. Um, no, it's I mean, cool, you, mate. You, you supported us from the start. Um, you know, we're old mates, 15, 16 years now, that we've known each other. Well, we'll get one done at HR4K. And I, I, Always. Yeah, I'll get one done at HR4K. And, um, uh, Wandsworth, come up. 
do one in Wandsworth. We've got a little uh, little studio up there that we're going to bring yeah. in. What, what kind of studio have you got? So it's a tiny little studio we're turning into a podcast studio. What we want to do is we want to bring music back into fitness. So um, talking about Dutch from the bike shed, he he uh, said to me that you know a video killed the music, uh, the, the radio star. Um, and actually, he said that to you in a conversation. Yeah, he said how that did that come about? Uh, it was the idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, because he worked for MTV, and I think I think actually, ironically, oh, yeah, I think yeah, the yeah, first yeah. ever video that was actually on MTV was a uh, video killed with the radio star. And uh, the idea was what we want to do is we want to bring music back no, it was into Dire Straits. It was Dire Straits, Money for Nothing. That was the first music was video. It? Yeah, Dire Straits, Money for Nothing. Oh, we'll have to. Hundred percent. Yeah, it was. Okay. Yeah. So what we want to do is we want to bring music back into fitness. We'll talk shit. I am as well. It's a podcast, that's what you're doing. Isn't it? <laughs> so um, I want to bring music back into uh, Fizz. So why don't we introduce new bands? So new bands, they can come on the podcast and then we talk about some of the stuff that you were kind of talking about. So um, what drives you, what keeps you fit, what keeps you entertained, what is it you do to stay fit and healthy while you're on the road, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, how do you deal with the stresses, etc. And then let's listen to your music and let's get your music out there. So when you're in the gym and you're out running or you're out on your bike or whatever else you're doing, you now listen to new music so we're introducing music within those uh, sort of fitness uh, venues that we've got so people are now training to tunes and new tunes and people are getting what you know, live so, uh well some There's of them, an idea some of them might be i think some of the interviews might be live um, no 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 i mean imagine having a live, a live band, band yeah. while you're training <laughs> you can have that idea yeah thanks man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then, no because it'd just be like trying to do a fucking burpee to every fucking um yeah, but that was the idea. So we uh, bring in music, introduce music, and then we talk about the, the BJJ stuff. We talk about uh, uh, functional fitness, not necessarily CrossFit. Uh, I'm not pissed on CrossFit. It's just I like functional fitness. It's about that sort of stuff, really. Uh, and then what sort of kind of drives people, but it's mostly about the music, and, and, and that's kind of what we wanted to go for. And it, as I said, the whole point of HR4K is it's a, a business model based on escapism. You know, so the fact that we bring in American brands, you can't get them here in the UK. So again, it's something different. It's something about that. Um, and then music and motorbikes and everything else all kind of leads to the same thing. Uh, so that's the plan. But anyway, little studio, excuse me, up there, they'd be welcome to use. And then we want to do the same thing in Amesbury. Again, come down there, do some bits and pieces. And then we're going to have a couple of opening parties. And just excuse me, Megan. Ali. Right, so... HFRK Hereford is obviously open. Um, Wandsworth is open, isn't it? Yeah, for, it's open. Yeah. Um, where uh, Wandsworth High Street, isn't it? Yeah, Wandsworth, Wandsworth uh, 63, yeah. Wandsworth High Street. Co-located yeah, cool. with Flow 63, yeah. Flow 63, the BJJ guys, yeah. right? And then Amesbury is due to open when? Uh, looking at July, I think we are. Oh, that soon? Yeah, yeah. So, oh. well, the original plan was it was going to be this mm, January, February. Uh, we're planning and everything else, and then the cold weather we're probably going to get, so we pushed it to the right. Um but yeah, it's it's going to be it's pretty good. Um, I'm, I'm mega excited about it. Um, I think I think we've already got God knows a couple hundred people already to sign up as soon as we're open. We haven't even laid a brick, and there's there's um, you know a good few hundred people wanting to, are interested, and certainly a couple hundred people ready to sign up. Um, again, we're not after cool kids; we're just <clears> after <throat> good people who just want to get fit and change their lives and 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 just move and functional fitness. It's not about being the alias mofo in the room if we get them i'll probably get rid of them so i'm not interested in those types i'm interested in good honest people who just want to go in there and you know and, and socialize um yeah and then uh, at the same time down there we we're going to support the local community we're going to get uh, some of the units in there to come train um get some of the uh, police uh, units in there get the cadets in there get loads of different people in to use that space um and then we even talked about with rubicon didn't we, we talked about that they could potentially use that space for some of the stuff that they're doing running down the road from them as well. So, yeah, lot, lots, lots going on, really. Awesome, mate. It's awesome. I love, yeah. I love the brand. I love, I love, the, I love HF, okay. Hereford, great place to go. I love the community you represent and all the people you tied in with. Um, so good luck to it. What's the website? H, uh, www.hr4k.co.uk and it's uh, at HR4K at, oh, if I just HR4K search for yeah, it on social media like, find yeah, it yeah, yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. Right. except that one bloke who's doing like a 4K run that he managed to just <laughs> get the bastard what's he got it. HR4K no, no, so there's some geezer who's got like <laughs> he's done a 4K run his probably name is I don't know whatever it's called Harry Reynolds and he's done a 4k run so he's now got instagram hr4k bastard. 
um but yeah um there's a couple other bits and pieces we're working on we're also you looking at on, doing yeah. um we're looking at doing um so we tied up with spartan races which is mega uh looking to do some stuff with go rock potentially in the future but certainly with spartan races uh we've had a chat to the guys behind the murph um who are all ex navy seals and uh, we said look you know why don't we do the murph in the uk and we could be your guys explain what the murph is uh so it's basically doing a wad with um uh, with a plate carrier on. Uh, obviously, depending on, there's also, uh, you know, wads you can do with backpacks and other bits and pieces. But the idea is just to tie that link, that stuff that we're doing in the States with our cousins that we've served with, and then obviously with uh, bits and pieces uh, back here. Um, so we're also looking at doing like a uh, combat conditioning in some of the parks in London to support uh, the stuff we're doing in Wandsworth and the other location, which I can't really talk about at the moment. Um, and that th- basically this is getting guys and girls out to train for whatever it is they want to train for whether they're going for spartan races whether they're going for go ruck whether they're going to do something because they want to raise something for someone else it's just so we're going to do that as well um, so um anything else no no i think there's one other thing yeah ground hammer yeah, so oh, yeah. We, we, with Grand Hammer Beer was a little uh, venture that we're probably going to kick back off again. So. I didn't realise it stopped. Yeah, well, well it's just... I think I with everything else going, No, I yeah, know, yeah, Grand Hammer Beer. So Grand Hammer Beer uh, is basically as a British beer made with American hops. And we came up with the old uh, spilling blood in the same mud since 1917. Um, so I'll tip it our hat to our friends across the pond. Um and uh, we just use it for events at the moment. At the moment, we've just been using it for things like uh, the Oktoberfest that we did last year. It's just our beer, our own brew. And I think we're going to probably relaunch that. When's your next event, the HF, okay? Um, don't know. I think it'd probably be probably opening Wandsworth when that officially opens. Oh, okay. So I'll give you an invite. Yeah, yeah, sweet. Well, I wasn't thinking of me, I was thinking of people listening. Uh, right, cool. uh, but definitely, um, we're looking at uh, a couple of events in the summer and also uh, the next Veteran Business Day, which we hope to be down in Amesbury. So. If you own a business, a uh, small business, or, or um, you're looking at starting a business, or you just like supporting veterans who've got their own businesses, you should come down on least and sign up. Mega. Mega. That's it, mate. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah. Let's do it again. Bit of a straight bloke uh, podcast, but it's been all right. Eh? Well, you're Ben Garber, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs>